This is crazy. This is crazy. This is crazy. Everywhere you turn, it's the same old sports talk, the same headlines, the same news, and the same boring information. This podcast is here to change all of that. We bring you hot sports takes, winning sports betting strategy and picks, reliable gaming industry news, and breaking interviews with some of the biggest names in sports business. My name is Ryan Noople, and welcome to the Noop Sports Show. Hello, everyone. This is Tom with NoopSports.com. At Noob Sports, we will help you make money on sports betting. Check us out. Noob Sports. It's K-N-U-P sports.com. This is our college football preview podcast, where we are going to take one college conference at a time, and we're going to talk about some of the things that we like. And I should say what I like and what I don't like. Check us out. We'll have 10 of these podcasts for our different conferences. Today, we're going to talk about the American Athletic Conference, the AAC. Charlie Strong is now in the AAC. He is the coach of the USF Bulls in Tampa, Florida. Charlie hasn't won a lot of games in his, his head coaching career, but he may have just reached the right spot at the right time. The USF Bulls won, won 11 games last year. They were 7-5-1 against the spread. And he has 16 starters, which make me, will probably make him the best team in the conference. They figure to be favored in possibly every game they play. So the Bulls have an opportunity to finish the regular season, maybe even undefeated, I'm possibly playing in one of New Year's six bowl games. Now, what could stop them is there are a lot of people who are on their bandwagon, and they may be overvalued a bit on a game-by-game basis. Uh, the, the original architect of this, of this team, Willie Taggart, went off to Oregon, and, and the cupboard's not bare by any means. I mean, Charlie Strong... Uh, has some experience, but there's still a learning curve every time you have a first-year coach. Um, Don't be surprised if if they drop a game or two along the way, but uh, the Bulls are pretty tough. Then we move on to the... First of all, I'll go back. I think the Bulls are going to win another 11 games. We move on to the Temple Owls, who are 10-4 and last year, 12-2 and against the spread, which is something you may want to pay attention to. Um, it was the Owls who represented the East Division in, in last year's AAC title game in which they won. It was the first time in program history they came off back-to-back 10 win seasons. Uh, they, were, they also won a bowl. Uh, they were very dominant in the AAC, uh, outgaining their, their opponents by 209 yards per game in conference play. Yikes. Uh, what I don't like about the Owls, um, signs are pointing down for this year. They have some similarities to the Bulls, and they have to manage expectations under their their uh, new coach. Um, Matt Rule was their coach. He left for Baylor, and Jeff Collins takes over. He steps into a very, very challenging situation. Uh, not In the schedule-wise, Temple has to travel to USF, uh, and they have 10 starters back, maybe the least experienced team in the conference. Um, one issue is they lost their four-year starter quarterback and will have a freshman as a replacement. Uh, they lost five of six tacklers from their defense in 2016. Um, yes, they may have won 10 games, but I think probably this year they're only going to maybe get seven. I might go eight at, at all. The over-under on that is six and a half. The Golden Knights of UCF, Central Florida, six and seven last year, eight and five against the spread. Scott Frost did an incredible job last year in Orlando. He inherited a team in 2015 who didn't win a game. Uh, he'll have nine starters back this year on offense. Uh, they hope to repeat and even do better. There will be expectations in Orlando on that. Uh, they did go 0-3 in games that were decided by seven points or less. They need to toughen up on that. Uh, what possibly I don't like about the Knights, 
you know, I, I'm sounding like a broken record here, but uh, increased expectations should prove difficult for, for this team and, and, and a few of the others we've already talked about. I mean, when a team makes a jump like, like the Knights did, uh, you'll usually see a few less wins in the column the next year. Uh, they will have to play Temple on the road. They will get to, they will get to play the Bulls at home in the final two games of the regular season. We moved to the Yukon Huskies and they weren't very good last year. Three and nine, three, eight and one against the spread. Uh, I don't know if they can get much worse than they were last year. Uh, they went to a bowl way back in 2010 and things have pretty much fallen apart since then. Uh, they're even going to be a, a home dog many of the times in, uh, in the conference. I mean, when you play Memphis, Tulsa, Missouri uh, at home, uh, you're going to, in the USF, you're going to be a dog. Uh, they're going to try to have a faster scheme of, of play this year for uh, Coach Randy Edsel. Um, so they got a lot of a lot of room for improvement in uh, in UConn. Sometimes new coaches. What I don't like is sometimes new coaches um, seem to rule in this. At least, you know, this guy is familiar with the, the conference. He's a, he's an alumni. Uh, the offense will need to improve its scoring average. It doesn't necessarily have to be as good as as last year. Uh, the faster pace on offense may affect the defense, which will now be on the field more often. So they have their issues. Uh, over and under for UConn is three and a half. I go one. I go over, possibly four, maybe five, but four looks like about it. Cincinnati Bearcats four and eight straight up, three and nine against the spread. Um, they were a massive disappointment in 2016, uh, which means they got rid of their coach Tommy Tuberville. Um, Four, four coaches, first-year coaches in the division now. Um, Luke Fickle, former defense coordinator at Ohio State, um, doesn't come in with a very stock cupboard, but uh, he has some talent. He'll see weekly improvement here. Uh, the, the schedule is somewhat friendly as the top three teams in the West are not on it. I look for this team to improve a lot. What I don't like is... Uh, they have some offensive issues. They only returned five starters from last year's team. Um, the Scott, this, this squad went 13 quarters without a touchdown. Went through three quarterbacks. Um, that's going to be tough. Uh, over and under is five. Wow, that's really tough. Uh, where they only won four last year. I think I can get them at six. East Carolina Pirates are three and nine last year. 3 8 and 1 against the spread. Scotty Montgomery joined Scott Frost as one of the elder statesmen of the East Coaching uh, Fraternity. All six head coaches are either in their first or second year in that division. Um, there's a sizable gap between the uh, top and bottom three years ago. The gap is beginning to close for the Pirates. Uh, the offense put up at least 400 yards in every game but the final one. Um, ECU actually beat North Carolina State last year at home. So things are looking up from their 3-9 and nine season. What I don't like uh, is they had an ugly 1-9 and nine finish to last year with a win over UConn at home. The offense might be good, but the defense is really bad as they've given up 36 points uh, and a 453 yards per game last year. Uh, Non-conference, they play West Virginia, Virginia Tech. Those are going to be uh, not winnable games for them. Um, probably an extra win this year, maybe four for them, for the East Carolina Pirates. In the West Division, we have the Houston Cougars, who are 9-4. and four. Um, They expect to blow through most of their conference this year on the West side. They might even play in new, next year's New, uh, new Year's Six Bowl game. Uh, probably not. We may be able to uh, take advantage of the fact that some of the other teams are down. Um, there are two Power 5 teams on the non-conference schedule as they face Texas Tech and Arizona. They possibly could win 
one or both of those, uh, and then finish with the USF Bulls as a remaining question mark at the end of the year. They have a two-year starter at quarterback, Greg Ward, and he is gone, but Kyle Anderson from Texas A&M is ready to take over. Whenever you can get a, a, a... a replacement from one of those Texas schools, you're probably doing pretty well. The, uh, the defense isn't very good, so the learning curve will now going to be very steep. The Cougars figure to face some substantial spreads on a game-by-game basis, at least in league play. Uh, are they going to win eight games? Yes, they'll probably win nine games. The Navy midshipmen are nine and five last year. Uh, their coach is in his 10th year and is the most experienced of anybody in the conference. He's the only one who has logged more than three years at his current school. Um, this is kind of kind of huge when you have continuity. Uh, the middies are 10-4 and four in the last four seasons as underdogs. They even upset Notre Dame at home last year. They are more experienced than last year, uh, although they only have four starters back on offense. They did win the AAC West last year. Um, they could show uh, some experience to come back and do that again. They do travel to Notre Dame this time, and they uh, get to play Army. Sandwiched between these dates is a game at Houston. So it could be an ugly finish in November. Uh, so they have to start out well. Uh, look for them to fade down the stretch over under a seven. I'm going to go push there. I think they have seven wins. We move on to Tulsa Golden Hurricanes, 10-3. and three, Very good season last year, 8-5 against the spread. <clears throat> they have gone 6-1 and one against the spread on the Road Dogs under Coach Philip Montgomery. And um, they have many opportunities this year to cash in on that role, including early season games Toledo and Oklahoma State. They play USF late in the year. It seems like everybody plays late at USF. I don't know how they do that. Um, this program has been to a bowl 10 of the last 14 seasons. Um, what I don't like, they were a surprise, and they're probably going to regress. They lose a great amount of talent, including all-time leading pass yardage, um, running back James Flanders. Uh, they've gone 8-5 and five back-to-back uh, seasons. Uh, this is kind of, they're kind of quick to react here. I think that they're going to go under that seven wins. For the seven and a half spread, Memphis Tigers eight and five last year. Two years ago, they started eight and zero, were the fifteenth in the country after they beat Ole Miss. After that, they didn't they didn't finish well. They replaced the coach and the quarterback. They struggled last year. Um, things got to be better under second year uh, coach Mike Norville. They're the most experienced team in the in the elite in the conference and should have the best offense. What I don't like is they have to travel to Houston and Tulsa. UCLA is on the non-conference schedule. Um, the defense has to find a way to improve by after allowing 40 or more points six times in the final 10 games. Their over-under is eight and a half, and that really is tough when they go eight or nine. Um, I go with eight. Eight wins for them. The SMU Mustangs. Coach Chad Morris. Hasn't been to a bowl yet. While they failed, they they drew USF and Navy in their schedule. They lost those. They don't play the USF this year. There are four AAC road games that look tough. They'll probably be an underdog at all of them, uh, but they'll be ready to fire away. There's a good chance that they're going to start 4-1. and one. That could take some value down the stretch. Defense is pretty bad as they allowed 36 points per game last year. Um they were right around, they could be right around that bull line. Um, and let's, let's remember they gave up 75 points last year to Navy at home. Uh, over and under five, uh, let's stay right at five. Toledo Green Wave, uh, Tulane, I'm sorry, Tulane Green Wave, four and eight straight up, six and six against the spread. They're the weakest team in the conference. Uh, things aren't looking good for them. They're under uh, going to be undervalued at times. So you might watch the games and see if you can pick a game where they're going to be able to compete. 
There was three times last year where they lost and yet they outgained their opponent. They're a little bit more experienced. Uh, Coach Willie Fritz is going to be ready to uh, prepare for a little more difficult offense. Uh, they have won twice on the road in the last 12 tries in the, in the conference. Um, I don't know. They went to four overtimes last year in Southern. They're probably not close to a bowl game. Um, four and eight last year. Over under this year is five. I'm going to go under. They're going to go four, maybe even three games. That's a recap of the AAC Conference. Uh, this is Tom with Nuke Sports. Be sure to check us out at Nuke Sports, K-N-U-P sports.com. Have a good evening. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Nuke Sports Show. If you enjoyed this podcast, please consider subscribing to our iTunes channel today. Plus, visit us at noopsports.com for more picks, previews, strategy, and news. That's K-N-U-P sports.com.